Listening to God's Word is an essential tool for your spiritual growth. We bring to you the simple but highly anointed message that guarantees absolute liberation from all oppressions of the devil and powerful impartation for all round lifting in life. Take a leap into a divine encounter as the anointed man of God takes you into an adventure of a lifetime. God bless you as you listen. You make that amen. God, with God, when you say that kind of amen, your answer, your desire will come quickly. It is my prayer that whatsoever you are trusting God for in this service shall be practically delivered into your hands. That amen is not a believing one. That amen can be better than that. More louder, amen. Praise the Lord. By the privilege of heaven, I will be speaking briefly on the topic titled, Is There No Balm in Gilead? Part 3. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no balm in Gilead? I want you to know that there is balm in Gilead. There is balm in Gilead. And I want you to know, people of God, that the word of God is the balm in Gilead. The word of God is the balm in Gilead. And the physician there is Jesus Christ. Jesus. And remember, I want you to know that whenever we are talking about the word, we are talking about Jesus. So we can equally say, well, the word is Jesus, and the word, the physician is Jesus. And what a joy that we are in the house of God. We are in the Mosiah, and that is the dwelling place of the Mosai God. No matter what you are looking up to God for this morning, shall be practically delivered to your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 20 to 22. Verse 20 says, The harvest is past, and the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Verse 21 says, For the heart of the daughter of my people have I heart, and I'm black astonishment had taken hold of me. Verse 22 says, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is, is not the head of the daughter of my people recovered? Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. It is my prayer this morning, if you will care to believe, everything called terminal disease, everything called HIV, everything called cancer of the blood, cancer whatsoever, everything called hypertension, Everything, every whatsoever the name they may call shall be humiliated this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall be humiliated this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. A resounding amen. But it is your understanding you have concerning your understanding of your right you have as a child of God that launch you all that launches you into the realm of what called divine height. What that entitles you for your healing. Praise the Lord. It is your understanding understanding i remember understanding makes for what all outstanding the difference between a student that's called 40 in a subject and that and the one that's called 80 percent in that subject is simply what's called understanding it's simply understanding the same in, so same what, in the same vein in this kingdom the one that is living healthy and the one that's not living healthy what called, it is the understanding of your right understanding of your right and not understanding of your right, claiming. And when you understand your right, you claim it. Praise the Lord. So what are the understanding you need to know? I want you to know this morning that you have become, as a child of God, you have become a lively stone. You have become what's called a lively stone. Immune against all manner of sicknesses and diseases. You are a lively stone. How do I know that? In the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5 says, Ye also as a lively stone are built up a spiritual house and a holy priesthood to offer up a spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. You are a lovely stone and stone cannot be infected. Stone cannot be sick. So as a child of God, you are not expected to be sick. You are not expected to be going to hospital like other people, like unbelievers. Because God, you are a lovely stone. After the order of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are lively stone. Two, what is that right that you need to know concerning concerning yourself 
as a child of God. Two, you are now in Christ, not outside Christ. You are in Christ. You are in Christ, not outside Christ. In Christ. And no sickness are penetrated into what's going to the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. No sickness can enter the body of Christ. In as much that no sickness can enter into the body of Christ. No sickness can enter into your body. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, not old. And all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. If any man be in Christ, be in Christ. The question is, are you in Christ? To this morning, the question is, are you in Christ? If you are in Christ, definitely, you are no longer who you used to be before you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Now that you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you should live what we call a different life. If any man be in Christ, well, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are becoming new. Praise the Lord. Every satanic what called plant in you, everything that has been ravaging your body, he tattoo, shall be humiliated this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall be uprooted this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that doesn't allow you to serve God, serve God the way you want shall be uprooted this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I didn't hear you believe in Amen. Equally, I want you to know one of your rights in this kingdom as a child of God. By the word, by the word of God, we are empowered to manifest our sonship in God. We are what called empowered by the word to what called manifest. To demonstrate our sonship in God. In God. In the book of 1 John chapter, 1, chapter 3, verse 1 to 2, says, Behold, what manner of love that the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Verse 2 says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doeth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Praise the Lord. We are the child of God. We are empowered by the world to manifest our sonship. The son of a goat is a goat. The son of an, of an elephant what? is a what called an elephant. And the son of God is a God. When you read the book of Psalm 82, verse 6, you will see there. It says, Ye are gods. We, what call the son of God, is a God. And God cannot be sick. If God cannot be sick, definitely you cannot be sick. How do I know that? In the beginning, he created us in his image and likeness. So we are God's copy. We are God's what call copies here on earth. What well, we represent God, and God cannot be weak. God cannot be sick. What came in, what happened in the beginning? Sin. It is sin that dethroned man from the realm of the supernatural to the realm of natural. Where sickness is the order of the day. Where disease is the order of the day. But Jesus Christ came and restored what was stolen. That's why as many that receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior, is not entitled, it's not permitted to be sick. When you know this understanding and you walk in the consciousness of this understanding, you cannot be sick. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Also, I want you to know this morning that you have been redeemed. You have been redeemed. One of your rights that you need to know as a child of God, you have been redeemed. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Be made a cause for us. For it is written, cause is everyone that hangeth on a tree. God, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of sickness and diseases. Christ has redeemed us. He has delivered us. Taking us from the kingdom of darkness to the what God, the kingdom of light. In the, plan, in the realm of the kingdom of light, in kingdom of light, sickness cannot get there. It's not possible. Because the dominion of light over darkness is instant and unquestionable. According to the man of God, the apostle over this commission. Darkness cannot conquer that light well, darkness cannot conquer light. Light is the master of darkness any day, any time. So, and sickness is a darkness, disease is a darkness. So, whatsoever darkness that is still harassing you this morning, 
the light of God will change that darkness out. In the name of Jesus Christ. The light of God will change that darkness out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to know that you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Sickness from what I call sickness free zone. Sickness will call free zone. You have been translated. You are no longer in this world. Though we work, we are in the world. We are not of the world. We have been translated. We have been what called promoted. What other people are suffering from, we are not permitted to suffer the same. Because we are children of God. We are children of God. We are daughters and sons of God. Praise the Lord. In the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 says, Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? He has translated, translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. We have been bought with a price. What Christ paid for, we can't pay for it again. He has paid the price. We are just going on, we are to, to enjoy what God the gift. We are to enjoy the product, not to pay for that product again. Because he has paid for us on our behalf. Praise the Lord. But what is the anointing that he is? We are what God remember that we are in the service of anointing. Our monthly anointing service. What is the anointing that brings about total healing? That brings about sun health? One, the power to heal and deliver is in the anointing. The power to heal and deliver is in the anointing. In the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 18 it says, The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Why? And the spirit of God makes for God brings about healing, deliverances, diverse healings and deliverances. What? When the spirit of the Lord comes upon you, you begin to do the unusual. Your healing will be total. Your healing will be complete. That is the kind of spirit that is coming upon you via the anointing this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. That spirit will come upon you via the anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. Your amen is not a believing one. A resounding amen. I want you to know that Jesus Christ has not changed, people of God. If anything has changed at all, it's you. Because God is not subject to change. But man is subject to change. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what he did yesterday, he has the ability and the capacity to do it again. He's the God of again and again. I call him the God of repetition. God of repetition, he can do it again. People of God, believe, let your faith be online this morning. And that long awaiting healing that you are looking up to God for, this morning shall be a reality. Shall be a reality. In the name of Jesus Christ. Equal level two. What is the anointing that heals? Two, the mystery of the fan and the fire is in the anointing. The mystery of the fan and the fire is the anointing. In the book of Matthew chapter 3 verse 11 to 12, says, And indeed, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Who sues I am not worthy to be here. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Verse 1 says, And whose fire is in hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable, unquenchable fire. Quenchable fire. It's in the anointing. When it enters into you, everything that is not of God is removed. Everything that is not of God is swept out. And that is exactly that what will happen to you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. That is exactly what will happen to you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. The Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord. And remember that not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Even though Jesus Christ, the Lord Almighty, could not do anything on the spirit, what God was available. Say, in the beginning, the Lord created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And it was when the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the waters. God now said, verse 3, Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, I said, Let there be light, and there was light. Let there be light, there was light. By that Spirit this morning, I decree, 
in every part of your body that you need life. I decree, let there be life. Let there be life. Let there be life. In Jesus' mighty name. When light comes, darkness has no any other business than to bow out. The entrance of the word of God, they said, gives me that light. The entrance. As the Lord of the Lord is going forth now, your healing will be perfected in the name of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ was preaching in the book of Luke chapter 5 verse 17, he was preaching and the power of God was available to heal. He was preaching. It was not, it was not time for more deliverance. It was not time for healing, but the power of God was available to heal. And that Jesus is still the same today. So be expecting your healing as the same message is going on. Be expecting your healing, your deliverance from for hypertension, your deliverance from HIV, for deliverance from sickle cell, from deliverance from cancer shall be a reality this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe that, can I hear you louder? Amen. A resounding amen. What is the anointing? Number three, what is the anointing? The spirit of the Lord that set free the captives. The spirit of the Lord that set free the captive. The spirit of the Lord that set free the captives. In the book of, in the book of Isaiah chapter 49, verse in the book of Isaiah chapter 49, verse 24, 24, 25, 26, said, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lofty captive be delivered? Thus said the Lord, even the captive of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with him, and I will save your children, and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood. So that spirit that does that is in the, is in the anointing. You see the anointing. So when that comes upon you, you are liberated. And remember, one of the core values of this commission is to liberate. So when that comes upon you, you are liberated. You are set free from bondages, from what comes from everything that is called, that is standing before you. Because every one of us has been designed what called to get to our promised land. But there are obstacles on the way. So every obstacle, your own could be sickness. Your own could be stagnation. But I want you to know this morning that stagnation also is a God, is a sickness. Everything that makes life uncomfortable for you is a sickness. Failure, Lord, is a sickness. Whatsoever it may be this morning, you shall be liberated this morning. You shall be liberated in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall be liberated. Praise the Lord. I heard of a story of a woman that was looking for a house. What God, they carried one baby at the back and the one beside. And the little boy was holding one little boy. And he was going and he saw a place, what? Flat to let. And she entered that place. When she entered, suddenly, a door, what God, the door, the entrance door was called, was locked. And then one hefty, and two hefty men came and said, you have come to the end of your life. So the ritual, they are ritual, they were they were ritualists. And then he said, No, I cannot come no, no, I cannot die like others. My my case is different. And she brought out the bottle of anointing oil inside her bag and he poured so little on the ground. And that little boy that she was holding said, Holy Ghost fire, and that fire came out life. And fire came out life. And those healthy men could not work on go, could not move further. And they were asking them to go and open the door for that woman, that witch woman. You know to them, whenever you display signs and wonder, say, ah, you are a witch. Someone can say, go and open this door for this witch woman. Let her go out. But nobody could open the door. And the woman would go dip her hand again into that, well, into that bag, into her bag again, and use her hanky and wipe the door, and the door was open. That is the spirit we are talking about. The spirit, the spirit that set the captives free. They wanted to call them. So every power that wants to terminate your life before your time shall be humiliated this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall be consumed by fire. Shall be roasted by fire. That is the power that is anointing. I want you to approach this anointing with what called another what called with different mentality. Mentality, different mentality to this morning. But I want to approach this anointing. You have been taking it as usual. You have been taking it, maybe, you have been taking it like pomade. Take it, what Coco, 
what with understanding so that he can deliver for you praise the lord and what is the anointing for the power of god that destroy every yoke of sickness and disease the power of god that destroy every yoke of sickness and disease in the book of isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 says and it shall come to pass in that day and this today is the day is that day in your life this day must be that day in your life in the name of jesus christ it shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be taken away from all the shoulders and his yoke from all thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing some people that what they are suffering from is generational so by the anointing that yoke of sickness that kill your brother prevention your planet this money shall be destroyed in the name of jesus christ shall be broken in the name of jesus christ your amen is not so in it your amen is not so in it in the name of jesus christ no matter the matter what one thing i know for sure the creator cannot be greater than the creator the created cannot be greater than the creator Often time, often times we make mistakes by comparing Satan with God. We cannot bother. They are incomparable beings. We can't compare Satan because God created Satan. Nobody created God. Self created God. So there's nothing God cannot handle. All you need to do is to place your what God, put your faith in line. If your faith is in line, faith is what links you to the to the realm of the supernatural. It is your faith that links you to the realm of the supernatural. So let your faith make link you to more this money so that you can collect your desire. Because until there's a leakage, until there's a connection, rather there cannot be collection from God. Until your faith links you to God, you cannot collect anything from Him. Praise the Lord. That's why I beseech you, I urge you this morning. Please let your faith be alive. Let your faith be alive. Because it is to you according to your faith. Praise the Lord. It is to you according to your faith. Every yoke that has been harassing you, your family harassing you in your lineage shall be broken this morning in the name of jesus christ shall be shattered this morning in the name of jesus christ so what is the anointing the power of god that he is all manner of sickness and disease is in the anointing the power the power the power the power of god that he is all manner of sickness and disease look at what happened in the book of matthew chapter 10 verse 11 and when he had called them talking about jesus when he had called unto him his 12 disciples he gave them power against unclean spirits to do what to do about them to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease he gave them power he gave them power also as a child of god god has given you power in the book of john chapter 1 verse 2 said as many as received him to them he gave power to do what to exercise dominion over what called sickness and diseases power as many have received him to them he gave you power to become the source of god praise the lord so this power will be what god will be more will be activated by the anointing this morning this power will be activated by this anointing in the name of jesus christ i want you to know that before when jesus christ was born the age one to age 30 jesus christ was powerful that all those things that he began to demonstrate at when he was 30 was there initially but when the spirit of god came upon him the spirit of god was called activated those powers those deposit in him and he began to demonstrate when the spirit comes, when that spirit comes upon you you began to what you begin to operate in the realm of supernatural people will begin what god begin to wonder at you where have you been where have you been that is exactly what happened in the, in the day of Pentecost. What, is, what Peter knew and the rest of the apostles, they could not teach people. Why? Because the power was not available. As soon as the power came down upon them, they began to talk. They began to say. They began to teach. All those things they were saying, they knew them before. But they could not do anything with them because the power had not come. This power this morning, when that power comes upon you, everything called disease, Everything that will make this life difficult for you shall be humiliated in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall be uprooted in the name of Jesus Christ. Every plant that my Father in Heavenly Father has not planted shall be uprooted this morning. Every plant in you 
that my heavenly father has not planted shall be uprooted in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want you to know that in the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 38, God says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, not bad, doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. It was healing. What called? He went about doing good. Healing people. So Jesus Christ is in the business of healing people this morning. You shall be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Our God is an awesome God. It's an awesome God. No wonder that songwriter said, My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Brings me out of valley. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. He's me when I'm broken. Strength he will be weakened. Forever he will reign. My God is awesome. Can I hear you sing? Awesome. 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 My God is awesome. Savior of the whole world. Giver of salvation. By his stripes I am healed. My God is awesome. Sing awesome. 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 And what a joy that awesome, that awesome God is in the house this morning. What a joy that the, that awesome God is in the house this morning. You are the next to be visited in the name of Jesus Christ. You are the next to be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. Every harassment of hell, Lord, every harassment of hell in your life, this morning shall be terminated, shall be humiliated, shall be uprooted in the name of Jesus Christ. There is one power that is superior to every other power. That power is in the anointing. By the reason of the anointing this morning, every harassment of hell, every disease and sickness in your body shall be uprooted in the name of Jesus Christ. That amen is not a believing one. A louder amen. In conclusion, people of God, sickness is a storm. You need Jesus in your boat to steal that storm. Sickness. Disease is a storm. Stagnation is a storm. Name them. It's a storm. But in the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 39, verse 37, that word, when you read, when you read this, when you read the scriptures, when you read it, you will discover that when the storm came against their boat, talking about the apostle, Jesus Christ was in the boat. They cry unto God. Jesus, help them, help us. And Jesus stood up and what? And still the storm and said, Peace be still. And there was a great calm. Why? Because Jesus Christ was in the boat. If you are not giving your life to Christ, Jesus Christ is not in your boat, and anything can happen. When the storm comes upon you, when the storm of life comes, there's no way you can escape. People of God, what a day! that you have what an opportunity that you have to what to connect yourself to the one that can steal that storm in your life i'd like you to join me people of god this morning and lift up your voice beyond people of god at this point i want you to join me your feet lift up your voice and pray god whatsoever you are looking up to go for maybe provincial any part of your body that you want god to heal you you can place your hand there and say god oh lord god it's too late that the spirit of god is the anointed lord king of glory be for you i am now lord let this issue blow be terminated is that your prayer let this two issue be terminated let this issue be harassed lord be uprooted lord in the name of jesus christ is that your prayer pray vehemently pray vigorously pray wholeheartedly lord king of glory let this issue become the world be uprooted lord be attended to lord lord king of kings you did it in the past do it in my life let it be replicated in my life in jesus mighty name we are praying all eyes closed and all heads bowed if you are here in our midst this morning 
and you never said yes to Jesus. I said, Jesus Christ cannot steal that storm in your life. If you want God to steal that storm in your life, I want to close your eyes, put your blood, place your right hand on your chest, and repeat this prayer after me quickly and with all sincerity. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord, I come before you this morning. Lord, how I know that I'm a sinner. Lord, forgive me my sin. Lord, cleanse me with your blood. I know you died for me on the third day you rose again for my justification, for my deliverance, Lord. Lord, save me and deliver me from this storm. Lord, I thank you because I know you have, write, you have written my name in the book of life. To you alone be all the glory. Amen. If you pray this prayer with me, outside the auditorium, inside the auditorium, wherever you may be, walk faster to the altar. Walk faster to the altar as the choir sing. Walk faster to the altar. Are you clapping for Jesus, people of God? Faster to the altar, wherever you may be. Faster to the altar. Jesus Christ wants to see that storm in your life. Don't take this privilege for granted. Don't take it for granted. God is looking and calling on you. The Spirit of God is speaking to you. Move faster to the altar. Faster to the altar. Faster, faster, faster. The louder you clap, the faster they come. The louder you clap, the faster they come. Are you coming? God, Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you, people of God. Where are you? The more they are coming, they are coming, they are coming, they are coming, they are coming. They are coming. Louder for Jesus. Louder for Jesus. Louder for Jesus. Everlasting Father, internal rock of ages, the King of glory, your grace has rescued this one. Let your grace sustain them in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your grace keep them to the end in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. People of God, open your eyes. You've given your life to Christ this morning. You have not given your life to man. You have given your life to Christ. Us in your life, no one of them will return back home with you. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? There is balm in Gilead. And there is also physician there. The word of God is the balm. And the physician is the Jesus Christ himself. You see, eyes that see are few. But eyes that look are many. Until you see it, the provision, the prescription of the great physician, you'll never be free from sickness and disease. Until I saw Matthew 8, 17, I was never free from jaundice. Praise the name of Jesus. Tomorrow we make it exactly 20 years that tablet has entered this mouth. 17th of September, 1998. All glory be to God. We serve a God who can do what no man can do. Whatever represents sickness in your life, I decree an end today in the name of Jesus Christ. So be able to see what God is saying. The provision has been fully made available. And this morning, we are breaking all generational causes. All. All. Whatever stands as a cause in your life and your family shall be broken completely this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, no trace of a cause shall be traceable to you at your departure from this mountain. We have been told that before Jesus came, Man was under the plague of the enemy. Under the plague of a cause. The arrival of Jesus terminates the cause. So we are under the grace of God. For as many that are born again, they are no more under the cause, but they are under the blessing of God. The direct opposite of a cause is blessing and blessing is superior to causing it's superior 
and it's a choice of individual i've laid before you life and death blessing and cause he said choose life that you may live as god of heaven liveth whatsoever god has not planted in your life shall be humiliated by this anointing in the name of jesus when jesus came he declared it is finished it is finished he was hung on the tree and he declared it is finished because cause is every man that is hung on the tree that the blessing of abraham might be ours. so he took over the cause and gave us the blessing say with me jesus gave me the blessings say it a minute jesus gave me the blessing so every cause over your life they are hereby averted in jesus name challenges in the family all the time is a cause business and career failure is a cause constant miscarriages is a cause family crisis husband and wife have never gone the old man without being having issue is a cause stagnation of any kind is a cause sickness today affliction tomorrow it is a cause and a decree over someone today whatever represent a cause in your life none of them shall return back or with you in jesus name what causes does is to block your blessing causes a blockage to man's blessing but by redemption you have received the blessing of the lord you will receive the blessing of the lord generational causes are inherited they are the causes inherited and in my search of scripture i've come to understand that the cause of all causes is inability to say five letters that is the cause of all causes inability to say sorry that is the problem with many today inability to acknowledge their sins is the reason for many people being accursed god said to them of all the fruit you must eat but this one don't touch but i won't hear genesis chapter 2 and verse 16 and 17 and god said you can eat of every tree but of this you must not eat but he won't hear he heard of it and the cause came and in genesis chapter 3 beginning from verse 4 downward god started raising cause on man god came to man he said why must you eat of the fruit of the forbidden fruit instead of a man to say i am sorry he said god are you not the one that brought the woman to me excuses are the reason why many are plagued with the cause of the law and god said i'm coming he went back to the woman why must you eat the fruit god are you not the one that created the serpent where you see the serpent catch him and kill him god said i'm coming god didn't need to talk to serpent and god said serpent this is your own portion of a cause so god raised a cause on the serpent you are going to be crowning with your tummy you are going to be enemy to man god returned back to the woman and raised causes on the woman in pain shall you be delivered and god came back to man and god used about three verses to fall to cause a man because he's the head if something is not working in your family as a man you are the number one suspect you see my wife is not good you are the one that is not good if the head is good the whole body will be good this nation is facing a lot of problems because the head is bad if nothing works here i am the number one suspect accept responsibility so you can be free from cause causes inability to say sorry i decree this morning whatever have been causing causes upon causes in your life 
and end has come today in the name of jesus christ now quickly before we take the anointing there are five different types of causes number one is the cause of the law you break the law then you come under the cause you break the law then you come under the cause the cause of the law there is also number two satanic causes or diabolical causes these are the causes placed on you by someone by someone you have done evil to or evil about satanic causes or diabolical causes is placed they place it on you because of what you have done either positive or negative negative. and number three is the cause of man man causes also the cause of man perhaps your parent caused you because you are not taking care of them now hear me people of god and quote me anywhere if your parent calls you on the platform that you are not taking care of them there is no prophet that can set you free there is no prophet because the word of god can never change always take cover under the blessings of your parents both spiritual and physical both spiritual and biological there are things you do to a prophet that your generation keeps suffering it for life for life that is how we have it in our outline for today it is being said everywhere across the globe there are things you do to the prophet that if you don't go spare you your generation unborn keeps suffering it and that is where where many today are suffering at sheep the cause of man there is also this is very important number four self-inflicted cause nobody places on you you only place it on yourself and when you die it passed down to your children for instance people came here sometime ago and stole ipad i tell you that as god leave it your generation unborn to the fourth generation will be suffering it that's the war i place that cause on that man church is not a place to steal you come around on sunday with okada to collect people's bag your children's children including you and your wife will never be free from that cause man causes jesus caused so i have the right to cause he saw the victory and he caused the victory and the victory dry everyone stealing one way or the other what does not belong to you you are placing yourself under the cause self-inflicted cause praise the name of jesus and there's something about self-inflicted cause it can generate to your lineage onto the fourth generation you make people to shed tears sunday morning during covenant our prayer you block their way how bad your generation will never be free from that self-inflicted cause they will never be free and also we have what we call generational causes generational causes come from the four listed causes i've just told you it is a kind of a cause that move from generation to generation but glory be to god generational causes can be averted they can be averted and we have been told this morning to avert all generational causes what must you do you must accept jesus into your life with genuine repentance with genuine repentance genuine repentance like david we are first generational cause upon your life and you can also stand in the gap for on your born generation so they will not suffer the same it can be averted the question this morning is how then can generational causes be broken please write it down and i believe the holy spirit will give you quick understanding number one way by which you can break every generational cause is for you to be born again 
genuine salvation set you free from generational causes if the foundation be destroyed what can the people do what can a man do if the foundation be destroyed the foundation is bad but you are taking care of the top it's a waste of time check the roots check the roots what happened in the roots and we notice that well once your generation root is not good enough run to jesus if any man be in christ a new creature all things have passed away and all things are now new you must be born again to affect causes to blessing you must be born again what else must you do you must believe in the deliverance power of jehovah god believe in the resurrection deliverance power of god jesus came to turn causes into blessing acts chapter 3 verse 26 that is what he came to do to turn causes into blessing what else must you do plead for mercy and favor that is what we call divine intervention number three plead for mercy and god's favor plead for mercy one cry that jesus never rejects is the cry of mercy david was truly cursed but david cried for mercy in psalm 51 verse 1 down to the end and the mercy of god you know clear of the mess in the life of david but his generation still survived plead for god's mercy what else must you do take advantage of prophetic grace for your total liberty by a prophet the lord deliver israel and by a prophet they were preserved Hosea chapter 12 verse 13 and 14 by a prophet they were preserved it was through moses that they were able to get to the promised land take advantage of prophetic grace over your life what else prayer and fasting must not be neglected jabez was cruelly cursed but he cried to god on the altar of prayer and fasting and the cause upon the life of jabez was averted jacob was cursed but the altar of prayer while wrestling with the angel avert the cause upon jacob he received a change of name somebody is here this morning you are receiving a change of name in the name of jesus christ what else must you do plead the blood of jesus the blood of jesus upon every self-inflicted cause the blood of jesus the blood of jesus you cannot be making people to shed tears while you think you can be loving. No. You are planting evil seed against unborn generations. You may think you are enjoying. With your eyes open, everything you gather, you will leave it in the midst of your days. That is how causes operate. Plead the blood of Jesus. What other way? Engage violent praise second chronicle chapter 20 verse 22 to 24 when they began to oppress him the lord set ambushment against their enemy on the altar of praise god always avert causes causes are turned into blessings what else must you do go for parental blessings <laughs> this is very fighter that it may be well with you that your day may be prolonged on the on the on the on the land it says ephesians chapter 6 verses 1 down to 3. children obey your parents the lord for this is good and right honor your father and your mother which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you that you may live long on the head go for parental blessing you don't back your parent and think of making it in life no no you don't why 
power Oyedepoh while he was alive was still against the son's ministry God's servant was still building houses for his father until the man became a member of the church and pray for his son go for parental blessing somebody say my parents they are idol worshippers yes that you came in from them you came out from them go let them pray for you receive their parental blessing and what else must you do believe also in the altar of sacrifice you can sacrifice your way out of causes genesis chapter 2 chapter 8 verse 20 to 22 no area an altar of sacrifice and the plague which can also be called a cause stay from the children of israel rear altar of sacrifice return those things you have stolen that is still in your domains you cannot stand when that gun is also standing it's not possible return them in first second samuel chapter 24 verse 24 and 25 they will rear an altar of sacrifice and the plague stayed the plague left david and his people and lastly what must you do believe in the power of the anointing as we have been told the anointing has the power it has the power to destroy every yoke of curse in your life and i decree this morning by the anointing of the holy spirit no cause is permitted to remain on your life again in the name of jesus christ by the resurrection power of jesus whatever call comes upon your life and end come today in the name of jesus christ whatever call generational causes in your life in your lineage and end has come today in the name of jesus christ every cause placed upon your business and career and end has come in the mighty name of jesus christ every hanging blessing that is meant for you that causes have with head there shall be full delivery of them from this service in jesus name therefore stand on your feet this morning and begin to ask the father by the reason of the anointing whatever called generational cause upon my life is hereby broken they are hereby broken they are hereby broken by the anointing of the holy spirit they are hereby broken by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, go ahead and speak to the Father. Go ahead and speak to the Father. Go ahead and speak to the Father. In the name of Jesus, by the anointing today, every generational cause upon my life, upon my lineage, they are hereby broken in the name of Jesus Christ. They are hereby broken in the mighty name of Jesus. I am set free today by the power of the anointing i am set free today are you speaking to the father are you talking to god every trace of cause upon my life and end has come today by the power of god thank you father blessed be your name in jesus wonderful name we are praying romans chapter 10 and verse 10 with the mouth man believeth and with the heart man believeth, and with the mouth, conversion is made unto salvation. Until you confess it, you'll never be free from it. Until you say it out, you'll never take it. Until you confess it, you'll never take hold of it. With the heart man believeth, and with the mouth, conversion is made unto salvation. Number chapter 14, verse 28 say unto them as truly as i live as you have spoken in my ears so will i do whatever you speak with your mouth today the lord will perfect it for you whatever you speak out with your mouth today today which is a special day where every generational cause is being broken it will become your own portion in the name of jesus i like you to say loud and clear lord jesus, lord jesus. say it a minute lord jesus, lord jesus. 
by the blood of covenant today i stand on my behalf and my family my lineage i stand on my side on my behalf and my generation my siblings and i look onto the blood of the lamb for a separation from generational causes by the blood of jesus we are delivered today myself my generation my children in the name of jesus from this day i and my family by the blood of the lamb we entered into another covenant the covenant of blessings from this day i disconnected i disassociated with every generational cause in the name of jesus from this day i break every evil link in my family by the blood of jesus by the blood of the lamb i break the strongholds of every negative trait upon my family in the name of jesus every evil covenant that has been made by my ancestors through the blood of my family they are hereby cancelled in the name of jesus set me father in the name of jesus every covenant laid by the walls against me against my generation by the blood of jesus today i renounce them i refuse them i reject them in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i turn back against the evil covenant and i stand my ground against those covenants i refuse every negative trait on my bloodline i refuse every stronghold on my bloodline in the name of jesus i come before the altar and i lay down my life for a brand new life from this day every generational cause they are hereby averted by the blood of jesus i break all satanic all demonic barrier i destroy evil strongholds operating over my children operating over my husband operating over my wives i connect their destiny to the new covenant of the blood of jesus even from today in the name of jesus a new bloodline begin from me today a new family begin from me today a new experience begin from me today a new breakthrough begin from me today no more generational cause if the sun shall make me free i shall be free indeed go ahead and declare your liberty this morning go ahead and declare your liberty declare your freedom declare your liberty liberty from premature death liberty from delay liberty from late marriage liberty from recurrent family crisis liberty from joblessness liberty from hereditary disease i decree my liberty today by the power of god almighty from evil harrow against my family i decree my liberty from sudden death the liberty of my home of my family of my sibling by the power of god almighty 
every generational cause they are broken this morning by the power of the anointing le copra lo katuzia arapa kakatuzi me repara katuzia akake ketuzi e repra kataya ma repare katuzia akato keteria arapande ketuzi e korubra ma rakakatote e rekakotaya ma rapande ketuzia thank you father bless be your name in jesus mighty name we are prayed in the name of jesus christ you are praying place your right hand on your forehead and i decree by the mystery of the anointing this morning whatever stand at a cost in your life they are hereby broken for heaven in the name of jesus christ now hear me people of god this commission is being sent to liberate the world from all oppression all oppression of the wickedness therefore from every oppression of the wickedness upon your life be set free in the name of jesus i beg you in the name of jesus no man can be free except you accept jesus into your life in case you are not sure of your salvation don't go until another opportunity will be given to you in the second service come and give your life to jesus i decree whatever stand as a cause generational cause that are passed down the line to your children to your children's children that have been affecting them causing delay in marriage causing unwanted pregnancy causing hereditary disease and affliction i command them to be broken today in the name of jesus every cause of untimely death over your life they are hereby averted in the name of jesus now hear me hear me i may not know why many people decide to put themselves in generational cause but i know why many are there <laughs> either you that you know touch the serpent the serpent shall bite either call the serpent shall bite please understand me whatever you know you have been doing that is not good go and revert it the time of rest the time of repentance the time of refreshing cannot come until there is genuine repentance act 319 repent and be comforted that the time of refreshing shall come from the lord place your right hand on your forehead in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god as this oil touch your head whatever stand as a generational cause over your life over your family over your children they are hereby broken for heaven in the name of jesus in the name of jesus every satanic cause is hereby broken every generational cause is hereby broken every sickness and affliction is hereby broken in the mighty name of jesus and the yoke shall be broken because of the anointing by the anointing today the yoke in your lineage the yoke in your family they are hereby broken for heaven in the mighty name of jesus thank you father blessed be your name i decree the bottles in your hand blessed whatever you use it for it will answer for you whatever god has not planted in your body shall be flushed out by that anointing every satanic plague on your head they are hereby destroyed by this anointing in the name of jesus so shall it be in jesus precious name go ahead and declare your blessing declare your blessing in place of causes declare your blessing in place of causes declare your blessing in place of causes touch the oil that is going to be given to you and declare your liberty declare your liberty choir please sing as we celebrate the god of liberty as we celebrate the god of liberty